talk about how there, the cards have laid down some rubber out there, and there's some discoloration, uh, discoloration of the track. And you kind of want to be to the inside of that when you enter the chicane here. And as you're coming through the chicane on the left-hander, see all that out there where the cards have laid that rubber down? You want to be to this side of that. If you're on that stuff or you're on the outside of that, you're, you're blowing your entry. So you want to be to the inside of that. And uh, as you're coming through here, you should be going over this patch right here. This guy's way off front. What's going to happen is going to turn in too early and it's going to point about the other curve. And uh, that's not good. You should be going over this patch. And we marked it right here, the patch. Everybody saw the patch, right? Everybody knows where the patch is at. So uh, as you're coming through the chicane, you should be right up against this curve, right over the patch when you flip over to go back right. So you, you turn in just after the patch? You should be going on, on the patch. And then as you're turning, you should be going over that patch as you're turning. Would you say you should be vertical on the patch? Vertical on the patch. Yeah. And then, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, and if you find yourself like you're aiming here, like when you turn in, you're about to hit the curve or something like that, so that's what it feels like, then you just need to wait a little bit longer, you know, just a millisecond or so, yep. a couple of feet, yep. and then start your turn and you'll be fine. And now look at that. Yeah. He, he turned in a little early, and now it pushed him all the way over to where he's almost on top of that curve. So he's really going to exaggerate his transition. He's got to try to get lined up. Yeah, and then he's got to try to get lined up. And then coming out of here, um, Remember that now we have this blend line in here, but there is a huge bump right here that's really, really hard. You can't really even see the bump. I mean, you found it. I, I guess. found it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it, when you hit that I, uh, endurance race here one year at Texas World, and uh, I was following a guy through the chicane, and uh, Paul had talked about earlier when you come up on people and you want to pass that person, it's best to wait and study that person for a little while to understand what lines they're taking and what they're going to do. And this is a perfect example because I was doing that. I was like, you know what? I can stuff him on the inside, but I'm going to wait and I'll just take him on the straightaway. And it's a damn good thing I did because he came out of the exit of the chicane, hit that bump, and got high sided, flew off the bike and landed. And him and the bike both slid up the exit, not down it, but up it, up it, and at an angle. And luckily, I was on the same trajectory, and it kept going, and we kept going, and we kept going. And his bike stopped about six inches from the wall, and he was just laying there. And luckily, I was able to dive on the inside. But he hit that bump, dig, and it just spit him off. And it was the weirdest thing. I've never seen anybody's bike go up. Yeah. The angle. You know, I've seen people go down it before, but I never saw anybody go up it. So, yeah, it's very dangerous coming out of it. Uh, but that's where you keep your speed. It's coming up onto the straightaway. And uh, the natural progression is when, when you're getting on the throttle coming out of 15, it's naturally going to drift you up towards the wall anyways, right? Uh, so the lower line that you take, it's not that big of a deal because when you start getting on the throttle, your bike's going to slowly drift up the embankment anyways, right? Uh, so. And by the way, we, uh, Dirk, you talked earlier about turn sets. Have you all thought about what kind of, what, what group of corners you really want to focus on? Because we really suggest attacking one part of the track and just kind of fudging the rest of it. For the rest of the morning and the early afternoon, just don't worry about the rest. Just get one part down really comfortable. Like, so maybe show a hand. Who so wants to tackle the chicane? The 13 through 15 coming on the street. I know Jerry does. All right, yeah? Okay. We'll be looking for you guys to tackle that. How about a uh, transition from one, one and two is, is oh, the, yeah. the mystery, the great mystery one. Okay, yeah. great. All right, how about uh, three, four, five? It's a really sweet section. Wheelie Hill. Once you get three right, Wheelie Hill becomes awesome. Great yeah, car. Because you're straight up and down. down. When you get three right, you'll be straight up and down for Wheelie Hill. Great. How about seven, eight, nine? That's a challenging one. Okay. Next, uh, next session. Next. No, that's great. I just, we just want you guys to think about that. Yeah. Attacking the track in sections and working on just specific things for now. The speed will come later after you get those specific things now. But if you don't get it worked out now, and then you get faster, you get in trouble really quick. Because the stakes get compounded before you can react to them, and that's where the crashes happen. So we want these improvements to be incremental. Seven's really difficult because you have all those bumps to deal with on the entry. And uh, it, it really upsets the bike. And, and it, it kind of, it's almost like a mental thing. Because you, you know, you're like, well, if I'm inside the bumps and I'm too far inside, I'm turning it in too early. But if I try to get to the outside of the bumps, if I only have about this much of track, it's kind of a mental thing. You're going, man, I don't know, it's kind of sketchy. But uh, if you believe me, your bike will go where you want your bike to go. Your bike's going to go where you're going to look. 
So as long as you look where you want to go, the bike's going to follow, right? So it's yeah, really, seven's really tricky. Really nice camber in seven. It's a lot more favorable than, than at first glance. So you've got more banking than you realize so your lean angle can be. And the thing about I, I seven is that in case the inside curve on seven yeah. is like, it will suck you in. Yeah. It will suck you in because there is a, a dip right here. And what happens is the camber goes to an angle and it kind of sucks in and there's a small flat spot of camber in there. And uh, that's why it's called the gravity bowl. Because at speed when you hit that piece of camber, everything compresses and it's just like you're losing gravity. And you come up out of it, it's like going down into a bowl and coming back up out of it. So, He's right, right on the inside of that curve. You need to be, you need to be careful because it's the gravity goal. So, I see a lot of people come in at the 10 really, really, really wide, like way, way out on the track, and you guys are way out here, and then you try to tighten it up. Um, you can actually make that a, a, a lot tighter line and, and come in a little closer to the inside on the entry, uh, and that helps you stay closer uh, to the curving on your exit, which is where you want to be, right? Um, when you do this and you come in way wide out here, and you're swinging out here, same thing. There's a lot of pea gravel and, and just uh, grass going off on the edge of the track there. And the problem is if you get out here and you have to adjust yourself or you have to do something with the bike, there's no room for you to do anything. You're going to go off the track. If you stay a little bit closer on the inside and for some reason you have to stand the bike up, something happens, you have all this room out here to work with. Okay? Um, the bad thing is if you're if you're right on the curbing on the inside of 10, it's rippled. So all the way along, along that curbing, the pavement does this all the way around. So you don't want to be exactly on it. You want to be maybe about a foot off of the, the inside of the curbing there. Um, and 10 is one of those turns where you just have to be patient. You can't make up time on 10. So it's just get your trajectory right, get your exit right to line you up good for 11. <coughs> That's it. Jim. I heard like, I mean, I know I'm just watching, but like when I was watching these guys go through 10, like when they would hit the ripples, they were going off and off the throttle. Yeah. You know, these, you know, main throttle main yeah. through there, you know? Yeah, move out a little more. Don't get right up, right on the curve, just move out about a foot, and that'll help. As Jimmy was saying, the throttle. Uh, because, Paul, it's true, this is the type of turn where once you hit the entry and you're leaned over, there's no, there's really not any maintenance throttle, there's no on and off the throttle, is, is you're set and you're at lean angle all the way until you get here when you get back on the throttle. So there, there's, there's nothing. You, you come in, you get the bike set, you lean it over, and you wait, and you wait, and you wait, and you finally get to the end of it, and then you're back on the throttle. <coughs> it's um, a great place to practice dragging your knee, though, because it's such a controlled thing, and ain't nothing else you can do, and you got to be terrible. Yeah, if you're, if you're in a right line, you can feel your knee going up and down with the ripple. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a bump going into town. We talked about this. It's about right here. So uh, on the track, uh, track lap, on the lap loop, you can see the discoloration. That's where the bump is, so you want to be on either side of that bump. It's, it's uh, right about in there. Is that the, the lighter gray patch or is there a darker? It's a lighter, lighter patch, yeah. Do you want to turn in before or after that one? I always turn in after it. 